Hey guys, so today we are building two new raised beds for the garden because I can't stop planting <laughs> and we're actually extending the garden too. And these are all things we should have done before the season, but I didn't know that I was going to do them. Before um, I take you over uh, and give this over to my husband, I thought I'd give you guys a quick tour. The garden is an absolute mess, and so this is totally going against what makes me comfortable. I generally would not want to show until I have everything cleaned up and mapped out and all the straw is down. But I'm going to show you anyway because this is life and this is real, and it's a mess. <laughs> so I'm going to show you the plan for the two new beds, where we're going to put them. And then the plan for next year, God willing, uh, that we still get to garden. And uh, we've already mapped out where we're going to be putting our 21 foot long bed. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, another six foot long bed. So I'm going to turn this around. Okay, so our tomatoes are doing awesome. And our squashes and zucchinis are, I had to actually give them some fish emulsion uh, fertilizer. And they are springing from that and then over here we have cucumbers and lettuce and some other things some squashes that haven't gone in because they're gonna go in the new beds and some purple uh, cowpeas some what else do I have in there Swiss chard a bunch of starts that still need to go in so right here down this row is gonna be where the 21 foot long bed will go next year and then right here there'll be a six foot bed um, but right now we're going to be adding two more beds right here. Oh, and then next year a third six foot bed over there too. So we pretty much won't be doing any in ground gardening next year besides our potato patch over there. So it'll go six foot, six foot, and then three more six foots there. So right now these two are going to be, or right here is where we're going to put our two new six foots. <laughs> so Heath is going to show us the materials that we're going to use. And it's really windy guys but honestly today it feels so good outside it's so cool outside it's like 70 degrees out here it's been in the 90s high 90s for last blowing days. through my luxurious locks i gave him a quarantine cut you guys my first time to cut his hair i was so Burn nervous her. and it's not it's not too bad <laughs> got some i look pretty <laughs> so what we're gonna do for right now is i'm gonna show you the uh materials that we bought for the raised beds similar did we ever do the video on the last one? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay on this so this will yeah never mind i showed them the other beds just okay, now so, so those, those uh <laughs> other beds we're going to build two more nearly identical um but essentially what we're doing is you can go to lowe's and pick up a roll of flashing used for roofing material flashing and this is the galvanized steel uh, they make it in galvanized steel as well as aluminum I prefer the galvanized steel it's just gonna last longer you got ketchup on your face nice my mom moment <laughs> galvanized steel this is 10 inches tall by 50 feet long and uh, the dimensions of the beds are going to be three feet wide by six feet long so all together that's 18 feet so 18 feet is 36 feet for the two that we're building so I'll have plenty left over to build something else out of this by the time I'm done so there's that. That was like $24, $25 at Lowe's. Then we have a four by four, eight foot post and uh, I want to say this was, this is a uh, fir wood. The other bed over there I used uh, some posts that I had lying around and they were, that's treated wood. But either way, it's on the exterior. It's not going to be soaked into the soil or anything, so it's not really a big deal uh, as far as the post that you use. So I'm going to cut this. Since that's 10 inches tall, I'm going to cut this into 10-inch sections. So one 8-foot 
uh, post is enough material for me to get all four corners and I'm going to actually cut a corner out kind of like so very bad drawing but it's gonna be a lot straighter when I finish cutting it and uh, maybe that's better probably be about an inch and a quarter thick here and thick there and I'm essentially going to cut them into ten inch sections and then cut that block out and that corner piece is going to be the corner pieces all the way around uh, for each four corners of the two raised beds and then that block that I cut out will actually be the pillars to support it on the outside on the long side of the beds. Every bit of material is being used. Uh, so we're not kind of we're not putting anything to waste or anything. We're kind of being really purposeful with what we're with what we purchased. You can do it. Come on, babe. Don't do that Come to on. me. Guys, I'm not even kidding. As soon as someone puts me on the spot with a math problem, my brain like shuts Are you down. Me or you? I'm filming you, but okay. So her brain. I went, know. Oh my god. I'm I, on the spot. I know. I know the answer. Okay, I can so do. Twenty four dollars <laughs> two by four. Hold on. I want to clarify. I can do math, okay, but if I am put on the spot, something happens and I have like fear of math out loud. <laughs> <laughs> it's a condition. I don't know what it's called. It's ridiculous <laughs> what it is. That's for the building materials to build the beds. 25, 25, 10. So that's 60 bucks. So you tack on for two beds like that's amazing that's that's two six foot by three foot beds for 60 bucks so you break that down that's 30 bucks a bed you're spending that's your building maybe 120 bucks on one of those little kits from tractor supply or or yeah. or something yeah. which is ridiculous you can do this for stupid cheap so i'm making my mark at 10 inches and there's a few things that you want to do to make sure that you're going to have the most precise measurement so that every single block is the exact same size. Um, with what we're building, it's not really as important as much as it would be, uh, for example, when I build my wife's bench later on, my precise measurements are going to be that much more important because otherwise the bench could be wobbly or you know uncomfortable or so on and so forth, or even just not flat look right. Um, so a few things that you want to look at when you're making your measurements is you want to make sure that the edge of your tape measure is completely parallel with uh, the edge of the wood. So if you're, if you're making your measurement like that, that's not going to be 10 inches. You're actually cutting off probably an eighth of an inch at that angular measurement. So wherever your edge is down here, that's where you want the edges down here. Okay, or <laughs> that's where you want the edge down here. <laughs> I talk good. <laughs> so that's your first point as far as making your measurement. So I'm making a 10 inch measurement mark. There's my 10 inches. The next thing you wanna look at, when you're making your uh, cut, is lining up the edge of the blade. You don't want to be directly on See the blade, how it's directly on the mark? You want that blade to be on the outside of that mark to where basically all you're doing is cutting the edge of the black. Because you gotta think that blade is an eighth of an inch. So every time, if you're cutting on that mark, your cut is going to cause the board that you're using to be an eighth of an inch less than what you're anticipating. You need to take that into consideration every single cut. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to cut out the corner. So I'm gonna make my mark at an inch and a quarter. Oh, and I made a boo-boo earlier. Uh, my blade isn't, it isn't an eighth of an inch. Uh, it, it's, it's slightly over a sixteenth of an inch. My measurement in my brain was off. I don't, I don't know why. 
But uh Did you just have math anxiety like me? No, I didn't. Okay, whatever. I don't have that. <laughs> I don't have that. So I'm just gonna make a few marks here. Let's see. Inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter. Really trying to focus making sure that that is parallel with that because even just the slightest angular movement can throw your measurement off. I just like precision. Precision is key. So there's one mark. So now if my angle is going to be here and I'm cutting down there, I need to turn it over and make the same measurements on this side. So I'm not gonna measure from this way, I'm just gonna stick with the same inch and a quarter measurements here. You guys, we'll link all of these materials in the uh, description of this video. So if you wanna get on Lowe's.com just to see what we used, so you can find it in your local hardware store or Lowe's or Home Depot. Okay, so I'm only doing this right here so that this will actually give me an, a reference out here so I can see how far I'm cutting. That way I don't cut all the way through the dang board. Just so you guys know, the reason why I do multiple marks is to make sure that whenever I go cutting this, it is square all the way down. So I can make my reference point up here and see that I'm just on the outside. But when I come down, I wanna make sure that my blade is going to be in the same spot. And I have this kind of a rough set because this will kind of essentially limit how far I can push this blade down. Okay, so I have my initial cuts. They're not too far off. I think they're pretty good. And those will serve as the corner post and will actually, the metal will be sitting on the inside and Heath will bend it. So this will never be exposed to the dirt. Correct. And then this is going to sit on the outside on the six foot long section. We'll have two on the outside, on each side and then just three feet between each corner. So while Heath is cutting that, I thought I'd show you guys one of our big projects that we had uh, that's almost done. We have a ginormous tree that uh, is literally growing into the brick of the house and the previous owners or the owners before that, I don't know, they actually modified the roof for this tree. And um, when we first moved in, we had some plumbing issues and we had a plumber come out and they cleaned out the pipes and said there were some small roots in there and we knew this tree had to go, but we were quoted almost two grand to take down this tree. And at the time, it was just a lot to swallow. I mean, it's a lot to swallow now, especially right now. Um, we had a sweet friend from a Bible study who works with big equipment and he volunteered to bring a man lift out here and he and he has knocked this tree out in a day. Still working on the coffee. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So there is the tree and you can see how insanely close it is to the house. Uh, we had to take out part of the fence, which we wanted to take out this fence anyway. So that is another project we have going on is we are taking out the chain link fence to the backyard area because I thought it was weird to have a fence within a fence. <laughs> but anyways, we cleared out all this wood and we started a new fire firewood place on the other side. So yeah, that was a huge project. So we're knocking out projects left and right. I have eight corners here. Sit those down here, out of the way. 
Then these pieces, like I said, are going to be on the outside. Stabilizers. Stabilizers. Make your seat upright. So now, <laughs> were you about to ninja chop me with that? Not a bad idea. <laughs> I'm going to cut this at the old 45. Because we're making a square. A square. We are in the garden and we have all of our materials out here. We actually decided last minute uh, to <laughs> change the design of the bed. So yay, I know we've walked you through this far, but we've changed it a little bit. And I'm sorry for that, but Heath said that he could do what I was envisioning. Or actually, no, I said I was gonna, I, I'd like to do something else eventually. And he was like, well, wait, I could just build it like this. <laughs> so there it is. Um, and we forgot to mention this before, uh, the, this is basically like a cardboard paper. It's super thick. Um, oh, okay, so it's not going to be quite as big. There we go. I really like this design. And then that back corner, I'm going to put a little planter to maximize on that space. And I think it's going to be great, you guys. I want to be clear about one thing. The price doesn't change. Yeah, that was really nice. <laughs> That's the best part. Because you got to think, fifty dollars. I'm sorry, uh, fifty foot and flashing. Which is this stuff down? And then, uh, if you're wise with your cuts, you could do the same thing. As far as uh, you could probably get away with it with a uh, seven two by fours, and then, uh, well, dang, you know, you would probably have to. Spend spend another ten dollars on another four by four might get away with a six foot four by four save some bucks there uh, but beyond that ten dollars more and you have yourself an, an l-shaped well in, in this way it is kind of like an upside down u a what a u a u <laughs> no okay that's an n Let's not sure. quibble, okay? <laughs> the chickens are interested in what you're doing, babe. It's shiny. <laughs> and it just keeps going. So Heath measured out. We didn't cut anything beyond that first cut. He measured out uh, three feet, six feet, three feet, six feet. And he will bend it to fit in... in create a frame basically and he'll put the corner pieces on it yeah <laughs> did I describe it okay <laughs> okay. so now this is <laughs> it looks funny right now because it's buckling but the uh this is the basic shape of it and the corner pieces will go on stabilizing pieces but we'll do all of that in place so we don't have to worry about picking it up or anything like that but to show you what it's going to look like that is basically the beginning of the it. frame that's yeah and then we'll throw the corner pieces on stabilizer stabilizer on both sides and should be good okay you're yeah yeah liberty liberty <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the screws I'm going to use to fasten the corners and the braces and everything to the flashing are these uh, sharp point lathe screws. They're only half an inch in length. So they're short, but they're going to be strong enough, you know. I'll probably do two per side. So here's a corner. One here, one here, one here, one there.
could bring it over here because we need to level out that ground a little bit more. We just want to make sure it's precise. We're running out of sunlight. The sun is starting to set. So really quick, Keith is going to lay those on there and show you how we're going to attach them. And then I'm going to show the sunset and we will finish tomorrow. That's our puppy. She's on a leash because she's five months old and crazy. As you can see, she's wanting to play with daddy right now. She wants to play. She loves daddy. That's that. Hi. Hi, baby. All right, putting in the last screw for this one. And, oh, Oops. maybe. <laughs> and there is the first six foot bed. Because for that screw that just fell off. Whoopsie. Is that missing from somewhere? No, it just a box. So, yeah, here we go. There's one. I love the style of the metal mixed with the wood. I it really, really do. Is solid. I mean, once you get it on a on the soft ground, it just kind of settles in and just tightens up. Good morning. Well, we are, well, I'm up <laughs> and letting the girls out and we'll be working on that bed after breakfast and hopefully getting it finished. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. My toes are not worms. I'm wearing flip flops, bad idea. Okay, all right. <laughs> we did come, <clears throat> excuse me, lay out this bed last night. So we'll be finishing the other L shape. Uh, hopefully this morning. I'd like to get it done sooner than later so we can fill it with dirt. And then we have a trellis to put up in there. And I have plants that are ready to go in. All right, we are heading out to build the L shape bed. Why, what are you doing behind me? You did something, didn't you? It is way, way hotter today than it was yesterday. No, it's not. Yes, it is. You don't even know hot if it bit you in the butt. Oh my gosh. Monday was hot. And we decided to build it in the garage because it's flat. Flat with giant cracks in it. This it actually used to be a carport. In the shade. And he's gonna finish this, finish, it, finish putting this together. And then we're going to move it out to the garden and finish it there. Gosh, babe, it's, it seems so much bigger now that I'm actually seeing it laid out like this. Yeah. Um, I feel like the video, you can't see how big it actually is, but this is exciting. So much more growing space. Very exciting. Last two screws going in for the L-shaped bed. Thank you, honey. You're welcome. I love the way that they turned out. I can't wait to see them in their spot and filled with dirt and plants, just so lush. You need to walk around it. Oh, okay. The yeah. luscious effect. <laughs> Oh gosh, this thing, hold on. Okay, walking around and getting, quote, the lusciousness so what I see. of it. <laughs> so here is the L-shaped bed. This is the cardboard stuff I was talking about yesterday, but I didn't actually finish my thought. So we, we're gonna show you what it was. It's called RAM board, and uh, construction companies actually use it for uh, what I thought it was before I actually looked it up. Uh, they use it for 
uh, floor protection. So if you're, say you're renoing a home and you have really nice hardwood floors, or they did stained concrete, they laid, laid the ram board down so that the stained concrete still has time to cure and everything, but it still has a protective layer over it. Um, and really all it is is just uh, a cardboard material that just lays down flat quick and easy. So um, I'm thinking you could really use this as a, a good uh, layer, you know, to keep the pesky grass growing up into your raised bed, so on and so forth. And uh, if you don't have a whole lot of cardboard laying around, you can just go to Lowe's and pick some of this up. So now we're about to move this whole thing over to the garden. It's going to be fun. So you ready? Here it is in its place. We laid the cardboard down, the ram board, and we, um, we're going to put a trellis in real quick. We're going to fill it in with dirt. And then I'll probably start transplanting later today. So we're going to show you what it looks like once we have the trellis put up and the dirt. And I'll probably show you uh, what we're using for a trellis and how we're putting it in in just a second. We are using a piece of a cattle panel that we had left over. I'm going to swing around really quick and show you. So our arches right here are cattle panels, 16 foot cattle panels. And over on the tomato bed, uh, we had a 16 foot one that we cut down to 11 feet. And this is what is left over, waste not, want not, and is a perfect trellis uh, for this bed. So we have the, um, the T-post in, and then we'll just zip tie the cattle panel to it. And it is the easiest trellis. Honestly, it might be cheaper than buying like the cute little trellises they have at Lowe's and stuff, it right, babe? Is. Yeah. And, and it's, it's sturdier. More rigid, sturdier. I mean, it's just, it's robust. Exactly. <laughs> it's robust. All right, so we can fill them up with dirt, the air tank, and, uh... Show them when we're done. Look at that belly. You're done. <laughs> and here it is, finished. And I love it. I think it turned out great. We put the cattle panel over there for a trellis. I'll take you guys around real quick so you can see the side. So there are our new DIY raised garden beds for under 60 bucks, not including the soil though. That's definitely an added expense. But if you can swing finding bulk soil somewhere, that will save you some money. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and share it and subscribe and let us know what you think in the comments.